Boy George, uh, thank you so much for joining uh, us today at the second annual uh, Billboard and Hollywood Reporter Pride Summit. Uh, it's great to talk to you today. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us. And um, I, I think we just kind of have to talk about what's going on in the world right now. I know that uh, mm -hmm. you've been very active on Twitter in the last few days in support of mm -hmm. the protests in America and across the globe. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering uh, what your thoughts are and what you're seeing uh, here and, you know, what you're seeing in the UK. What I'm seeing is blowing my mind. Like, you know, there's been a lot of tears, but there's always a lot of tears. I think if you're a, if you're a artist, you know, if you're a human being and you see these things, you cannot be not affected. I mean, you, if, you, if you're not affected, you have no soul. You know, and it's, yeah. um, you, know, you know, it's interesting for me because obviously, you know, we like to think in the UK that we don't have the same problems as America, but we have them on a smaller scale. We're a smaller country, but we right. have issues. I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say the energy, I don't want to be controversial, but as someone who's been arrested on both sides of the pond, I've been arrested in New York and I've been arrested several times in London. There is mm -hmm. definitely a different energy to being arrested in America to being mm -hmm. arrested in England. You know, in England, you feel like someone will make you a cup of tea, whereas in America, you think, I'm going to get shot if I say one more thing. And, you know, having been through that myself, the terror yeah. of being arrested in New York, I'll never forget my trip to precinct number nine. I wrote a lot of songs about it, and I never really finished any of them because once, once it was over, I was like, I don't want to talk about it ever again. I just don't want to talk about it ever again. I just don't understand how it continues to happen that we have these worldwide right. protests and there are still people smashing kids and girls with batons and chomping on people. It's like, what, is, what would it take for it to stop? You know, it's, it's yeah. so upsetting to watch it. And, you know, you just think, Jesus, man, it's like, and coming from the UK, I mean, you know, you know, of course, you always look at other countries and think it's far worse in, in other countries. And, you know, um, you know, the police are and the people in authority. They're very, very clear about the definitions. You know, if you break the law, mm -hmm. you're scum. Right. I mean, this idea of uh, innocent till proven guilty in America, I'm sorry, it doesn't exist. <laughs> You know, it doesn't matter what you say or what your crime is. Even if it's a crime against yourself, which mine was, you're still right. put into that terrifying system that is so aggressive and so terrifying. I mean, it's absolutely yeah. terrifying. And you think, maybe I'm going to get beat up or maybe even worse. I don't know what's going to happen. And when you look at other people going through that and there's film of it. Yeah. <laughs> Film of it. And then you've got people online saying, complaining, and you're like, are right. you not watching this? I mean, are yes. you in a different world to me? Are you seeing things in a different way? It's like, no. it's, it's, you know, I feel very, very passionate about it. I feel passionate well, I about it because, you know, my whole thing from the beginning was mm -hmm. culture club, you know, right. multiracial, multicultural, multisexual, everything, age, you know, I was never, we always used to say, you know, if you're, if you're an outsider, come to the culture club, that's where you, that's yeah. where you're going to be safe, because there is no judgment here, and there is no, none of that stuff, you know, as a gay man, you know, as a gay man who has never really been able to kind of hide it, Right. Despite what you may read about me, if you'd have met me in 1984 or 1982, you would never have said, oh, he was butch. You know, you would have, you'd have known what I was because what I was yeah. was obvious from when I was a kid. Right. And I, you know, from the age of six years old, I got called names, you know, and long before yeah. I even knew what the issue was, why people were so uptight about it. <laughs> like, right. why does everyone keep calling me a girl? Girls are amazing. <laughs> why, why is that not an insult? You know what I mean? I used to get that all the time. Girl. And all my friends were girls. You know, that was, that was my right. teenage life. All my friends were tough girls that used to kind of beat the boys up for me. Right. They would, like, stick up for me and get in the way. You know, they'd be like, you ain't going to hit him. You know, I, I knew some tough girls when I was at school. But all the girls that used to get right. in trouble were my best friend. <laughs> and and in, it's interesting that you say that because – 
obviously what a lot of people of color are dealing with at the moment is, is the fact that obviously that they cannot uh, hide who they are. It's just, it's their skin color. There's nothing about it that they can change, mm-hmm. but it's similar to what you went through and saying that, you know, you can't, uh, hi- you've never been able to hide who you were as a, as a queer man. Yeah. And um, a lot of comparisons that we're seeing right now too, especially this month during pride month is to uh, Stonewall and the riots there are, do you see a correlation? Yeah. Well, I think that, you know, anyone who is other, I put quite a lot of people into this category of other, and that is anyone who doesn't fit in. And you would think that because there's, there's so many of us, we'd all get on like a house on fire because basically <laughs> all of us, if you, now, if you kind of look at it, we're all kind of separate in a funny sort of way. We've all got our yeah. own thing that we're dealing with. And, you know, to me, like when I, when I encounter right-wing gay people, that just, it doesn't make any sense to me, you know? I mean, yeah, because that to me is like being a vegetarian butcher, you know? And, and if I read <laughs> someone that's, you know, when I read comments from people, like, and even conversations with people that are smart, I have conversations with people and I'm like, and they say things and I'm like, oh my God, you're not listening. You're not looking. And yeah. I got in trouble last year because I made some comment. I made, last year, about a year ago, I had an altercation with a, a girl online because I put all lives matter. And she mm-hmm. ripped me apart. And I was like, right. And then I, and then I kind of talked to her about it. And I was like, actually, yeah, I get it. I get it. I don't need you to explain it to me anymore. Okay, I understand. And so when I talk right. to people now, I'm like, no, 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 no. It's not about that. It's, it's about yeah. specifically this. You know, yes. it's, it's something that we've witnessed constantly. You know what I mean? I mean, you, right. you know, I spend a lot of time in America. That's, you know, I'm there more than any other place. And so, you know, I, I've been watching this and watching this for years and years and years, you know, and like everybody else, feeling the same frustrations because I not, obviously I can never ex- understand what that must be like. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. although I say, you know, I never had, I never was able to hide my sexuality. There's a lot of times when I actually am able to just not focus on that part of myself. But right. you know, when you, you know, for people of color, it isn't, it isn't an option, you know, and yeah. why should it be? Why should right. it be an option? Right. <laughs> why should you have to, you know, and you know, I don't want to, I really don't want to say this in a patronizing way, but I'm someone that grew up kind of worshiping black culture, soul right. music. As a lot Divas, of people have. You know, that was my inspiration. It's the source of everything that I do musically right. is from those people, you know, that I grew up listening to, Gladys Knight and the Pips, you know, Nina Simone. It goes on and on and on and on, you know. And, you know, for me, so much of what I do is inspired by, you know, that culture, by soul music, by all the people that I've grown up listening to. You know, when I so I come from a totally different point of view where I actually look at superior I don't look at it as, right i don't look at it as less i see so much I, you know my life so much. and you you said that you were able to have a conversation with somebody after uh you had mentioned all lives matter and she explained it yeah. to you what what was it what part of that conversation uh got to you that you were that it hit you that you well, it understood was, it was why kind of it was like, about it was that kind of like it's not about you. That was the mm-hmm. point I think she was trying to make. <laughs> she was basically saying to me, no, it didn't take me long to get it. I mean, I was like, okay. Right. And you know, I have to say in the last couple of weeks, I've listened to mm-hmm. some amazing people. I don't know who, the, who they are. They're just, there's been so many people propping up on TV, you know, young people, old people. And I've heard some really intelligent stuff that has really kind of, helped me to understand much right. more than I did. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, yeah. you know, people saying, oh, it's terrible that they're, you know, busting up these shops and this is happening and that's happening. I'm like, it's far worse when it's done to your physical body. Yes. You know, when the looting is your soul, yeah. then, you know, that's, I, I don't care about, you know, I mean, obviously I don't want people to smash up their cities. I don't want them to, to make things worse for themselves. And I don't want them to get ill. 
you know, right. there's all those of feelings course. of like, I don't want anyone yeah. to get sick. I don't want this to, you know, you know, that would be the worst case scenario that there was a spike mm-hmm. in COVID. So we're all praying that that isn't the case. And you know what? I have to say that although camera phones get on my nerve, you know, they really <laughs> are so important right now because yeah. you're seeing things. You know, we've had a whole year of, of, well, the last couple of years, there's been a lot of um, us seeing things and being told that's not what we saw. (laughs) Or being told, like you hear a politician saying something and you go, no, no, I clearly heard what that person said. There's no confusion about what they meant. Yes. And then it's like, then you have people coming on TV to explain to you what they meant. And you're like, well, no, no, I understood. You know, I understood what what the point was. I got it the first time. I think that... Yeah, and I think that, you know, it, it, it's, it's amazing that these, and I've been retweeting a lot of this stuff, which I don't normally do, but I've re, re, been retweeting yeah. a lot of these videos and things because I'm like, when will this stop? Yeah. I mean, it feels, like, it feels like right now that we're in a, it feels like we're in a moment. It, this feels like a moment yeah. to me. It feels significant. You know, um, it feels like, but I really hope and pray that this doesn't just, become another you know what i mean sort of moment where yeah. people react and then nothing's done but i right. i don't know i feel like there is something happening here you yeah, know i feel like there's something agree. happening here and i really hope it is what i think it is and i think that and yeah. i really hope that it is gonna gonna change you know so much absolutely um and you know going back to the fact that you know you've had uh chance to be informed, especially being online and, and being part of all of this and uh, being very active on Twitter recently. Um, in earlier this year, in January, um, you made a couple comments on Twitter about uh, pronouns and people accused you of being transphobic. And I'm wondering if you can kind of clarify what, what you were trying to say oh when you, know, you tweeted, like, leave your pronouns I have at the to door. say, my, my point is, is this, right? I have been gay for a long time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been gay for a lot of different, a lot of different decades. I was gay when it wasn't cool to be gay, and you know, I I see the world has changed a lot, and you know, that's what I wanted. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That's what I wanted. I wanted people to be able to, you know, be free to identify as whoever they want. And my point was when I made that comment. It's only it's, it's that policing of the. There is this sort of lot of bullying online. It's like you yeah. have to do this and you have to do that. And there is this sense sometimes that we're, our lives are being run by the internet. Yeah. You know, and, and I think what it is is that, you know, and I've realized this about tweeting a lot recently is that what I'm trying to do is not add to the noise. My point when I said the thing about the pronouns was, the point I was trying to make is like, you'll never have a situation when you encounter me well, you'll have to explain yourself to the degree where it's uncomfortable for you. My point is that, you know, when you come into my home or into my world, I'm not even, that's not the first thing I'm going to focus on because what happens is, you know, and I think that my friend, uh, I was talking to my friend Lady Bunny about this recently, and she was saying that, mm-hmm. I did, do you know Bunny? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you just, if you met Bunny, if you saw Bunny on stage, you would never think, I'm going to sit and have a really intense political conversation with her about, <laughs> about everything. And very recently, before the pandemic, I saw Bunny in London, and we had the most amazing conversation about all of this stuff, about politics, about America. Mm-hmm. And it's quite amazing, you know, how passionate, you know, and informed, I and mean, much more informed than I am. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm really not that informed, you know, politically but um you know i like talking about that stuff and i find it i think it is important i think it's important to to you know keep your eye on what's going on and you know without being swallowed by it you know right yeah i think that it's just really learning to navigate this tool that we have now which is so instant and i think it cuts out Mm -hmm. a lot of the thinking I think that, you know, what I'm learning to do at the moment is to breathe between sentences. It's a new thing for me where I go, do I need to say this? Have I thought this through? Because 
now we really have to commit to the things we say publicly. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, and you, and yeah. I think the pity is that there isn't enough, there's a lot of accusations that fly around and, you know, no one really discusses mm -hmm. it with you and you just think, come on, talk to me. Because right. what I think is important to, to understand is that, you know, as a gay man, there's no one narrative yeah. that exp explains who I am, right? In the same yeah. way that if you sit a bunch of drag queens at a dinner table and you ask them, you know, about politics or, you know, any kind of social issues, you'll find that sometimes people that you thought were really cool have got some really strange, <laughs> like, sort of um, conservative views. You know, I've, I've gone online and seen drag queens that I know saying really right-wing things. And I'm right. like, wow. So, you know, it doesn't necessarily equate that, you know, just because you look a certain way or you seem to be a certain way, you are. And I think it's this thing of, okay, people are much more sensitive than they've ever been, you know. And I think probably my generation are a little bit hard-nosed because mm -hmm. we went to school and got called queer and fag 24-7. You know, we also got yeah. beaten at school as well, by the way. You know, you could, right. what the cops are doing to people now, smashing, they used to do that at school and they were allowed to do it. So there was a lot of stuff, you know, that we went through. And I think that we're a little bit like, there's a little bit of jealousy, I think, sometimes with these older right. people. Like, how come you're getting to be all over the internet? How come you're <laughs> getting everything? And it's, it's all a yes. bit, you know, it's all a bit kind of, it's, I, I think I've realized that a lot of it is to do with adjusting to what is now and saying, you know what, this, right. these people don't have your cultural references. They don't have your social context. They have something new and different. And, you know, I suppose also there is this tendency with a lot of young gay people to kind of ignore what, what gave them the freedom to be who right. they are in the first place. There is this attitude, it's getting better because I think that I'm seeing now lots of people actually being a bit more like, oh, okay, I want to know about this. I want to, you know, and I think that's yeah. a good thing because, you know, I didn't know Bessie Smith or Ella Fitzgerald, but I found out about them. You know what I mean? I didn't go around <laughs> going, oh, they're not my era. I couldn't possibly listen to that. It's a, you know, it's, I think that when you're, a, when you're a, an artist, you are a little bit of a mm -hmm. cultural sponge and you just, right. you pick up on things and you notice things in a way that other people nece don't necessarily do. And actually I've found that, I feel like the world's getting harder and I feel I'm getting softer. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I feel like I've always reacted emotionally to what's going on in the world. Right. Not necessarily that I tap into what is bad about the world, but I react against what's bad about the world. Yeah. And I've found that during all of this, I've been, I've been, you know, meditating more, breathing, you know, trying to still myself, trying not to kind of react to things in the way that I always do. I'm actually trying to have a better relationship with myself. And I think once you do mm -hmm. that, it starts to really alter the way you feel about other people. Do you know what I'm saying? And I think right. we're all still getting our heads around this, this incredible thing that, you know, can do so much for us and cause so much trouble for us as well, the internet. Right. And it's like, yeah. you know, I, I kind of really wish, you know, if somebody like, if it's a, if someone that's a friend of mine, if I say something that is, incorrect they're not gonna they might have a go at me but they're not gonna attack right. me and hate me and say that you're i'm a bad person right. and there's nothing that can you know that's i think that's what's so heavy about this moment is that people are so yes. condemning and they're yeah. so quick to say you should be ashamed of yourself you're disgusting like i'm disgusting <laughs> <laughs> give me a break i mean listen you know i think the reason i didn't react too strongly to being called a transphobe it's because I'm mm -hmm. sorry, it is the most ridiculous thing you could ever accuse Boy George of being. Right. No right. fucking way. I mean, no, you know, no. It's, it's like, honey, you know, I went on American TV in 1985 and said, I'm a drag queen. I didn't realize that it was going to cause as much upset as it did. I mean, to right. me, it was just me being stupid. I was like, I'm a drag queen, you know, and people were like, <laughs> What does that mean? And I was like, oh, it didn't mean anything. It just meant, you know, I, you know, I've always called dressing up drag. So right, from right. a kid, it was like, put your drag on. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's jeans and a t-shirt or a big wig, you know, a la RuPaul. 
And I think right. that's, you know, a big part of it as well. You know, that I've always been, I've never really been able to slip by unnoticed anyway. So like I've, <laughs> I've, I've grown up being used to, you know, Right. But yeah, I and think that I'm I'm trying always to be more mindful of um what I say and just right. you know, I'm I'm learning to to sort of okay, you know, that wasn't a helpful thing to say. But I think people should be a little bit more gracious and a little bit more understanding and also factor right. in what you've been through as well, you know, and, and why yeah. you kind of like struggle with this, you know, this new way of doing things. But I'm always really supportive when people like you know, attack people. You know, I'm sort of weird like that. I think that's a Gemini thing where like if everyone else is speaking <laughs> on someone, I'll be their best friend. You know, obviously this was uh, back in January and people accused you of being a transphobe. Was that, are you saying that your pronouns comment was more in line with the fact that people should feel comfortable using whatever pronouns they want around you and you, you know, obviously accepting those I think the or point, I, I, is it something else? No, I think the point I make, I think the point I made is that I've known so many people who have walked into my life and said, I'm this, I'm that. It's mm-hmm. never, ever been an issue. And I don't suspect that it ever will be. You know, right. I'm not one of those people that giggles at somebody when they're walking. I'm not one of those people. I'm not. Mm-hmm. I don't laugh at people because they're fat. I don't laugh at people because they're different. I'm not one of those people. Mm-hmm. I'm just not. I'm like, you know, when someone's fabulous, I'm interested. <laughs> if somebody walks in this room and they're like, shit, okay. I'm, I'm fascinated by that. I'm drawn like, like a, you know, it's, it's, it's a magnet to me. Not the, mm-hmm. the opposite, the, you know, I literally, you know, when I was a kid, I used to get on the bus so I could go and look at strange people in the West End. You know, I was obsessed. And I think that, you know, artists are very open like that. And I think right. anyone, with you, you know, did I ever think I was going to get called a transphobe in my life? <laughs> I promise you, I am not. I really am not. And, you know, yeah. I, I guess, you know, you know what? It's like, it, you know, obviously I, you know, I care about anyone being hurt, but obviously when it's a gay right. person or it's a trans person or it's a drag queen, or I see someone getting beaten up because they're effeminate or see a girl get beaten up because she's androgynous. That right. tears me apart. I mean, it's not something that I, you know, I'm like, you know, no, I'm a big queen, honey. I love everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I find it very interesting, though, what you're saying about, you know, uh, obviously you were a trailblazer. You were, you know, calling yourself a drag queen in 1985. It was very yeah. progressive. And I, yeah. I imagine that it can be hard as things, like you were saying, as things progress to kind of uh, catch up and, and meet people uh, where we are today in like 2020. Well, I think that also the other thing is there is this sense that, you know, there's a lot of people that think they're reinventing the wheel. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And um, obviously we've all been in this uh, lockdown kind of quarantine for uh, mm-hmm. however many months at this point. What is, what is time? Yeah. Uh, but what, what have you been up to? How have you been uh, handling being locked inside? Well, I've been recording i've been making these little video clips and putting you know making i've been i've been doing this little show called the poor little greenie show which is just me using like different emojis and you know give, putting my personality and just i did like a mock a mock version of the voice because I, I do the voice in australia right so i did a kind of send up of that where i was playing all the different characters you know and kind of coming out with the things that they they say you know <laughs> you're so brave oh my god you've got an amazing tone <laughs> it's like you know, basically just sending up and also sending myself up as well. Finished quite a bit of music. Um, mm-hmm. Been able to, uh, pretty early on, I was able to start doing vocals virtually. I got a mic and I was able to get my friend to uh, run my logic on my computer and just kind of record things. And now we're starting to, you know, obviously I do art as well. So I've been doing stuff like that, cooking, you know, trying to eat healthy um i've I've been i've lost a lot of weight in lockdown which is not the case for everybody you know everybody's been quite surprised (laughs) this is such a a time to sit and eat cake right (laughs) i'm depressed (laughs) so actually strangely i i am also i've had a quite a unique experience because you know um there's a film being written about me 
And so I had mm -hmm. the director and the writer, Sasha Gervaisi, read me the script a month ago. And this was after three months in lockdown. So you can imagine, you know, I was expecting to, to hear this script and just go, oh, I hope I never see the film. And actually, <laughs> I, ended up having, I ended up having some major epiphanies from this script reading. And I was like, mm -hmm. because the director was asking me, he was saying to me, what did you want from John? What did you want from him? And I said, oh right. my God, I have no idea. And, you know, just having this space to be able to think about all those things has been so interesting because I've come to some yeah. really interesting new kind of understandings of like, number one, my big understanding is like, who could have given me what I needed in 1984? Right. <laughs> there isn't a human being. <laughs> yeah. And it, sort of knowing that, finally just going, what could anyone have done? Right. You know, um, and so that's been interesting. And obviously uh, everyone across the, the globe has been uh, in some version of lockdown or whatnot. Um, and of course yeah. that includes uh, queer youth who is, who are, you know, possibly in uh, homes right now that are not uh, very kind to them. I'm wondering if you have any, you know, thoughts or, or words for, for those kids who are, might be struggling. Well, listen, you know, and, and, you know, this is something that I get asked a lot. And, you know, I'm very active online because I like to, I try to, when, you know, I get a lot of kids asking me questions about this sort of stuff. And mm -hmm. I always really start, because you have to be very careful what you say to someone online because you may be right. pushing them towards something. You know, you've got to be careful. Unfortunately, you can only give kind of certain advice. You know what I mean? But I always yeah. say to people, look, so, First of all, I think, you know, one's queerness, you know, one's relationship with one's own queerness is really the starting point. Obviously, a lot of things go into that. What have you been told about yourself by your family? Right. Have you grown up listening to your family making homophobic comments? And, and what sort of, you know, because I grew up with that, but I knew it wasn't, I knew it wasn't like a deep hatred. Mm -hmm. I knew it wasn't like a, you know, I knew it wasn't, I knew it was like, oh, just because that's what people did in the 70s, they used that language. So for right. me, growing up with it is, is, you know, so I try to say to people, look, you know what, you've got to, you've got to come to terms with who you are and what you are. The minute you, uh, the minute you sort of make peace with that is a, is a brilliant moment where you, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not talking about going out to the world and telling people your business. That's, that's a, another step. I'm talking about right. the initial thing of like, you know, and I, I know it's not easy to get there, you know, because if you've grown up in a family or you're in a house where, you know, you're, you know, you know that what you are isn't accepted or you, you've got family that, you know, clearly do not hold back with their hatred of, of you know, right. like, obviously they don't see it when it's, clo you know, close to them. And, you know, it's, and it's one of those things. I mean, there's nothing wrong with me. So when, mm -hmm. you know, this is the thing when people are like, you know, it's, I don't want to be tolerated. Right. I want to be tolerated. I'm not interested in being tolerated. First of all, I, I mean, you know, and again, this might be a Gemini thing, but I'm not really sort of bothered <laughs> about how other people feel, really, unless they try and hurt me. You know, to right. me, it's like, well, if you feel like that, you know, that's, you know, that's, that's your miserable shit to deal with. It's not mine. You yeah. know, I've always been yeah. quite a sort of, um, a, you know, quite, happy with being gay i've never wanted to be straight right <laughs> I've, never, I've never had one of those like oh my god i wish i was straight i mean i think if i, I mean, if i had a chance to be gay again i would be gay again no question when you're a, a gay kid mm -hmm. you know you're you're you grow up in this kind of silence of what you are you're up until about i mean kids are coming out much younger now but yeah you know i was quite quite ahead of my i came out when i was 15. But all mm -hmm. those years before, it was like, you know. Yeah. I had a fascinating conversation with uh, the comedian Eddie Izzard many years ago, and I, because he's, yeah. he's a transvestite. So I was asking him about that. I was like, wow, you know. And he said to me, if you, if you, sexuality is like a pie chart. It's like everybody comes somewhere along that circumference. There might right. be a bit more over here, over there. So I think that, you know, <laughs> so, yeah, so thank you so much to um, you guys at Billboard and Hollywood Reporter. 
and good luck with the virtual summit that you're doing. It's a great idea and I'm really happy to be part of it. Thank you so much. Well, uh, this has been fantastic. It's been such a pleasure, but uh, thank you again. It's been, it's been a pleasure and I appreciate you spending a little extra time with us today. Oh, it was great. It was great. It was really good. It was ex and it was fun actually to do. It was yeah. like, shit, I'm working. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> I love working. I'm like, literally, I'm a workaholic. I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> All right. Nice to meet you. Yeah. You as well. Bye. Bye, George. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>